And boy, can I just tell you, I, I am constantly more and more disillusioned with the idea that if I just used traditional media to find out what was going on in this world, that I'd really know what was going on. Um, some major developments on the issue of free speech over the weekend, none of which have been highlighted uh, in our legacy uh, media. And some interesting stuff going forward and looking forward to the week in the free speech uh, space. So to catch up on all of this, including some polling of people at universities that didn't get any coverage in the mainstream media either, I'm joined uh, from the Free Speech Union by Jonathan Ayling. Jonathan, uh, nice to have you back with us. How are you? Good morning, sir. I've got a bit of a bone to pick with you, actually. Oh, gosh, what um, have I done? Wh whoever does the, uh, the the tweeting at the platform, uh, punctuation matters, friend. And I've had media contacting me this morning thinking that your tweet intonates that I'm running for mayor. And so I was woken oh, up this morning. Oh, well, uh, it's entirely my fault. I did that tweet, Jonathan. That's a terrible thing for me to have suggested that you would lower yourself to run for mayor of Wellington, I'm very, very, very sorry. <laughs> I had to admit I was a bit confused as to why uh, the post was reaching out asking what my intentions were running for mayor. So, uh, so I had to I had to figure out where that came from. And At least we know they're enough. listening, Jonathan. At least we know <laughs> they're interested. Hey, look, I thought one of the most significant. Um, announcements on free speech in this country is the Department of Internal Affairs has decided to abandon attempts at, if you like, regulating free speech on the internet. Yes, and of course you would have uh, seen this leading uh, both channels of the news, and I think it was the front page of the Herald yesterday, oh no, sorry actually, no one's said anything about it. And actually, Sean, uh, in many ways this was a bigger victory than uh, than the hate speech law back down that, that the Ministry mm. of Justice led. When, when my team first started working on this issue, we became aware of it before it was public. And we, we got into some of the details and I had one of the guys leading our legal work come to me and said, Jonathan, if, if we don't win this time, I'm, th this, is a big, this is a big deal. Um, it, it, what, what was being proposed was an entire reshaping of the uh, censorship oversight regime. And so this was, of course, built out of the 1990s. It was very analog. It's where we get things like the Broadcasting Standards Authority, the Media Council, the, the, the Chief Censors Office. There's six pillars in New Zealand's current uh, broadcast, uh, censorship regime, and, and, and that was all going to be redone for a modern age. And it meant things like anyone with a subscriber list over 25,000 was going to be considered a publisher and would automatically be bound by uh, the, the requirements that weren't going to be drafted by Parliament, that we're going to, that we're going to be drafted by some, some bureaucrats that were going to tell us what safety meant and what harm meant. And, uh, you know, things, uh, groups like the Free Speech Union would have definitely been caught, uh, being told then by uh, Big Brother exactly the ideas that we could, we could share. And, and so would the platform have been caught by this? Absolutely, Jonathan. We would have been... With, 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 yeah. Without a doubt, because at the moment, um, our would-be censors are horrified that their nets have holes that are too big and we, we're passing through them and, and they're, not, they're not controlling uh, exactly what we can say or controlling the narrative. Was and, this uh, push by, by DIA, the Department of Internal Affairs, was it also part of the Christchurch call? Uh, no, not exactly. No, uh, it, it was a, a parallel piece of work. Uh, no, the Christchurch call is, is, is something uh, quite independent. And of course, there's news on that at the moment with um, a, a review that's occurring in terms of its funding there. But, but Sean, we just consistently... Oh, no, well, see look, hang on, hang on, just don't trip over that. So I heard Luxon last week saying, watch this space. Has there been an announcement or are we expecting no. one? No, they ha I, I, I imagine uh, th th that will just uh, become a little little light item in, in the budget, and it won't be. Uh, I would be I would be surprised if the funding was fully removed. I'd be surprised if they were given much to do with those. So um, I think it's probably this is middle road approach that we see uh, the prime minister very inclined towards uh, to, to not ruffle anyone's feathers. Uh, wh wh what what I think is abundantly clear, Sean, is that. On every issue, when Kiwis become aware of what's at stake, they engage in big numbers. So we did polling 
uh, in, in June last year when we broke the story on this issue. We, we were aware of the changes that were afoot, and so the day before DIA made their announcement, we went out and said we need to give DIA a blood nose while they're at the gates or we're never going to catch them on this one. And so we broke the story. Media got very interested at that point. And it was, it was comical to then see uh, one of the policy managers front to make this announcement the following day when everyone knew about it already and, uh, and, and everyone already had some pretty major reservations. We did polling, though, that showed only a quarter of Kiwis were aware of the proposed policies at the end of the consultation period, though. And yet, despite that, it was, as far as we can tell, the largest or the second largest public consultation that's ever been done in New Zealand. We had over uh, 90% of the submissions made of the over 20,000 submissions came from the Free Speech Union. And, and it, was, it was effectively saying that the online space is the new public square and there is, there is no justification whatsoever for the need for greater restrictions online than we would in, in, in public locations. And if it is acceptable to, to say uh, offensive things in, in public, would we want people doing that? Probably not, possibly. Sometimes offence is necessary, but it's not our job to decide that for them. We live in a free country and we need to insist that we keep it that way. And whenever we get Kiwis involved in this, they, they tell Wellington to bugger off. And that's effectively what I think we've seen here. We've seen today. Um, Jonathan, you've also done some, some um, surveys recently or some polling recently, which I also note has been covered extensively in the mainstream media, um, around attitudes to freedom of speech at universities and on campuses, which we've been covering a lot. Given this debate, um, not always the most um, enlightened debate over tikanga Māori in, in law courses, what have you found are the attitudes on campus, on university campuses, uh, about free speech? Well, it stems from the proposal in the in the government's coalition, the commitment in the government's coalition document uh, to put forward legislation that will require universities to uh, do, do, have greater um, defence of free speech, and if they don't, they will face uh, funding um, uh, cutbacks. And and of course, it was that very issue that led Nick Smith, the vice chancellor of the university, uh, Victoria University, to uh, to to write his op-ed that that ultimately led to the free speech panel that we're anticipating at the end of this month. It shows that 53 percent of Kiwis support the idea of universities' funding being at least partially contingent on their defence of academic freedom. Only 19% opposed it. So less than one in five Kiwis uh, uh, don't like that idea. A majority of them do, then the, the, the rest is, uh, is made up of those, those who weren't sure. But there's a strong mandate for this issue. And, and uh, Sean, what was fascinating is it received majority support from every voter group apart, apart from one, I believe. Uh, and, and, and what so, was the one uh, voter group that didn't really uh, believe? Uh, I, I, I have to refer back to the document. I'm, sorry, I'm just I'm trying to remember that myself. But but I um, I think there is strong support across the political spectrum for this issue. And uh, you know when we have um, enlightened and insightful commentators like Mark Al Parkinson and and others of her ilk come in and try and advocate for this reason scholarly based discussion. Well, how do you like them uh, them facts? Stuck on those apples, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the public uh, are losing faith with the system at play here. And uh, one of the comments that I intend to make on this uh, free speech panel is that uh, the university will lose and is losing its social license.